What do you mean by what do I feel my partner's love for me would motivate them to do for me? Okay, so this is almost the same question as we asked prior, which is that question about what would my love for my partner motivate me to do for my partner mm -hmm. in reciprocal. Yeah. So now what we're saying is what would my partner's love for me motivate her to do for me? Mm -hmm. But it's my opinion about that. Yes. It's not what the reality is. It's not necessarily God's truth. It's what do I think, what do I feel my partner's love for me would motivate her to do for me? So in, in asking all four of these supplementary questions, we're really having to be humble, aren't we, and say, look, this is what I think love would do in this situation, but yeah. I have to be open to correction here. And I have to be open to the fact, yeah, that, I'm, that I might have a completely distorted view of what love should yeah. do. Yeah. I need to be open But it's to good that. to ask the question because it helps me see things about myself. Yes, and it helps in particular you to see distortions in ethics. Yeah. So in other words, if I feel my love for my partner would motivate me to do something for my partner, I can often reciprocate it and go, yeah. okay, I feel my love for my partner would make me go to work for 40 hours a week for her. Yeah. Okay, that means, if I'm ethical, that my, love of, my partner's love for me should motivate her to go to work 40 hours a week in order for me to have a nice life. Yeah. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yes. If I, if I had this ethical stance and I was asking the question in terms of both, from both perspectives, I would actually see quite easily most of the time where my ethics were out. Where, where I was not in an ethical place with regard to these questions. Mm -hmm. So my partner's love for me would motivate her to do what for me, in my opinion? Well, firstly, if I'm looking at it from a pure perspective, my partner's love for me would never ask me to betray myself yeah. in any way, whether it's spiritual, emotional, sexual or physical. So if my partner truly loved me, she would not ask me to betray myself in any manner. That's how it would be if I was in harmony with God. Mm -hmm. If my partner loved me, she would ask me mm -hmm. to take full personal responsibility for myself, emotionally, spiritually, sexually, and, and physically. Yeah. She would ask me to take full responsibility. Because she wants me to be a capable person who's able to care for themselves because she knows part of that pure love knows that that's actually a, a really great thing for you to experience. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So she, basically what we're saying is that if she, if she was pure in her love towards me, she would be having this feeling that she wouldn't want me to betray myself mm -hmm. and she wouldn't want me to abdicate responsibility for myself. Mm -hmm. Now, then we need to ask ourselves, well, what do I feel she's actually doing? <laughs> <laughs> is she actually doing that? Yeah. Is she actually asking me to betray myself? Mm -hmm. Or is she taking responsibility for things that I need to be taking responsibility for myself? Mm -hmm. Because if she's doing either one of those two things, she's not really loving me. Mm -hmm. I might like it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> like in the case of not having to take responsibility, I might like that. Yeah. But it's not, she's not loving me by doing that and I'm not loving me by expecting it. And I'm not loving her by expecting it. So there's really two issues there. If, if she's, this is my partner's love for me and if... And it's my opinion of my partner's love yeah, for me. Yeah, but if my partner is, so you've said that if my partner loved me, she wouldn't, or he wouldn't expect me to betray myself. Yes. He would want me to take responsibility for myself. Yes. But he also wouldn't want... To, to hang on. He wouldn't want to take responsibility for things that I should be taking responsibility for. Yes. <laughs> so in and, other words... And, and he would want to do everything for himself that he needs to do. He would want to take responsibility as well. Exactly. Because if he didn't take responsibility, then he'd be shifting the responsibility onto me, onto you. which wouldn't be loving for yeah. me yeah. or him. Yeah. All, right. <laughs> <laughs> all the hymns and hers. Yeah, it? it's yeah. all getting confusing. Yeah, yeah. But the, the, you can see it's the same set of questions that we asked with yes. the set of questions of what would my love for my partner motivate me to do for yep. my partner in the, in the sense it's the same set of questions but it's my opinion of it, not mm. what they actually do or what is God's truth about it. It's my opinion of it because my opinion of it may be different 
to what God's truth is, and then I have something exposed inside of myself. Yeah. So if I expect my partner to do something for me out of what I believe is love for me, but it's not actually love from God's perspective, now I've got an opportunity to have a look at my expectations and demands yeah. upon my partner. Yeah. I've got an opportunity to change something. Yeah. Now this requires still, remember, it's still self-reflection so far because I am looking at my feelings about what I feel should be done. Yeah. I'm not looking at what actually happens mm -hmm. or I might be comparing it with what actually happens, but I'm not saying she has to do it. I'm just looking at my feelings about that, yeah. if that makes sense. Yes, it does. So I'm not putting on my partner demands or expectations that they do exactly what my opinions are. I am looking at my feelings about what my opinions are about that such a thing. Yeah. Now, this is a very important distinction, yes, which most can. people, I think, are going to find themselves not doing, yeah. actually. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's one thing to say, this is the truth from God's perspective, right? And the truth from God's perspective is, my partner should never ask me to betray myself. Mm -hmm. However, the truth is also from God's perspective that there might be things that I feel or believe that need to change. Yeah. And my partner, if she's asking me to not betray myself, will actually tell me, you've actually got a problem with your emotion here yeah. because you believe something that is out of harmony with God's love, mm -hmm. right? So, so this is the problem that most people face is they go, you should never expect me to betray myself, even though I go, well, actually, if I think about it, I'm probably already betraying myself because I don't have God's <laughs> viewpoint on yeah. the matter. <laughs> right? Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. And they forget to do the self-reflection and this is Before they do the blaming. Yes, and this is why we've presented the first three questions that are very much about self-reflection before mm. we even consider what should you be doing for me. Exactly. Yeah. Yes, and it's even just and we, and it's even an acknowledgement that it's only my opinion mm -hmm. which possibly is distorted in love about what you should do for me. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. not necessarily reality. What we have stated in terms of the questions here, and if anyone looks at the outline, they can see the specific questions. What we have stated in the outline is, uh, is the exact question we need to ask from God's perspective. Yeah. But we need to analyse the answer from God's perspective and not our own as well. Yeah. And this is where we also generally run into trouble. Mm -hmm. Our definition of love is often highly distorted and very flawed when it comes to God's perspective of love. And as a result, we often expect things from our partner which are completely unloving. And we often want our partner to do things for us that are completely unloving, both for ourselves and our partner. Yeah. It's a bit like asking our partner to cook us a meal of meat. Mm -hmm. In the end, while you might think that is an expression of love from your partner to yourself, the fact that you've asked means you're out of harmony with love yourself. Yeah. And secondly, the fact that it's meat is out of harmony with God's laws. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so if your partner loved herself from God's perspective, she couldn't cook you a meal of meat, yeah. even though she might want to cook you a meal. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, this is where it gets down to the first two questions again, the primary questions. What would God's love do? If love was pure, what would it do? Is a very important primary question. Absolutely. And second primary question, which was, what would I do if I desired to do things God's way? If I, you know... What do I actually want to do? Be honest about it. Mm -hmm. Do I want to do things God's way? Second primary question. And these supplementary questions are just helping you determine what's going on with those primary questions. They're helping you to look at and examine ethics, the ethical interaction between yourself and your partner. How you see love of self, how you see love of your partner, how your partner sees love of herself, how your partner sees love of you, mm -hmm. and how you see each thing from your own opinion. Yeah. So like I said, in the end, there's eight questions. Four that I ask, four that my partner asks herself. So when we examine these sets of questions, what we're really doing is we're trying to come to come some kind of resolution as about what love would do. It's helping us. Yes. And this is why they're supplementary questions. Mm -hmm. The whole goal of these questions is to help us understand what love would do. Yeah. yeah. yeah.